How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Forever Arsenal podcast. We're back. We got one in. It's Christmas Eve, but we have to deliver for the people. Obviously, James is off. Um, he's gone to see family, so she knows Arsenal steps back in. Big up, Jess. How you? How you doing, Jess? <coughs> I almost forgot to unmute there for a second. I kept thinking during the intro too. I was like, unmute, unmute, unmute. Don't worry. You see, you've seen us flop it a few times, so it's all yeah, good. exactly. You guys, you guys have done it too, so it's fine. No, I'm good. I I can't complain. I was saying this earlier that like, top of Christmas. I love the holidays. I'm just happy that we didn't, I don't know, we didn't lose. So I'm I'm really happy. I'm excited to be here. And um, yeah, I'm ready to fight with Jordan, I guess. So let's go. No I'm pretty sure we're going to fight. 100%. No, I'm just thinking like we haven't got any Christmas spirit. Like, you know, I think a point deductive for people that ain't got anything Christmassy on. What do you reckon, Jordan? Like, you know, so. <laughs> this guy, he flung I on a Christmas hat and then... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mid intro as well, you know. <laughs> there you go. Like, I mean, like, you know, certain people don't get into the Christmas spirit. I think it's outrageous. I think is, points should be deducted. Is, is that the you hat know? that the Grinch wears, or have you got it wrong? No, I'll, never, I'll, I'll be wearing this tomorrow, Christmas. Day. I'll get into the spirit. Obviously, people don't like, you know, you know, believe it. I think in the comments, you should put like, do people deserve to be given deducted a point for not being Christmassy on a Christmas Eve show? We used to be friends, and now it's like <laughs> any excuse to try and get points of everybody else. Anything listen, like listen, listen, listen. I'm who's just not wearing saying. glasses has to t has to lose a point. You know who's not got a hoodie on has to wear a point. It's like, <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> well, I think it's terrible, like you know, but I'll keep it on. Yeah, yeah you, <clears> you 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 bring the Christmas spirit with you, Lee. Yeah, Thank you. You. Yeah, you do that. Hundred um, percent. I reckon you should be in that the, the new um. What's what that um. What's his name? The old um, miserable Scrooge. That's what you should be. The new <laughs> Scrooge. <laughs> Who me? 2024 Scrooge, Turkish. Maybe they should do the Scrooge meets the, the Grinch, and me and you starring it, mate. How about that? Well, oh, I don't mind. Like you know, what I mean, like humbug. <laughs> can, can you say humbug then? Like, can you say that then? Isn't it bar humbug or is it just humbug? What's going on? Ah, sorry, people. Listen, at least we're all smiles. We're all smiles because we're still number um, one. We're top of the league. You know, we didn't get the three points. We got the point. Aston Villa also drew surprisingly. So Arsenal lead the, the 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 league at Christmas for the second year running. Very different circumstances. Eighteen games played last year. It was fourteen, I believe. So good news all round, and we're back nice and early. I'm gonna head over to Lee first. He hasn't had many. Hours of sleep. Um, obviously, he was at Anfield. We are recording nice and early Christmas Eve. Um, Lee, how are you feeling? How was it? What, what was it? Was was Anfield as up for it as we all suggested they would be considering Klopp's comments? Best best atmosphere at Anfield for since the old days of the cop, I, and I mean that sincerely. Like I've I've always said it. You know, what I mean, it's been a myth how good their atmosphere has been, and and it has. It's been mm. nothing spectacular. Go back to when. You know, like the cop was terraces, you know, in the uh, the, the early days. I'm not saying when, but uh, it, it was the atmosphere. The first time I went to Anfield, I'll be honest with you guys, the first time I went to Anfield, I was blown away by the cop. Uh, how they were singing the atmosphere. And and I looked around to my mate and I said, we ain't winning here. And no wonder we're not winning here. Like We ended up losing 2-1. Um, and it's been a... For, for my for my journey at Anfield, it's always been tough. It's, it's been a tough, tough place to go. I've not had many successes there as a fan. But yesterday was up there with the, the atmosphere. You could you couldn't even hear us uh, at times. You know what I mean? We couldn't get an atmosphere going because that they was on you. They're on top of you now as well, like you know. And um, because the, the uh, you're at the front now, the the roof's so much higher up, so you can't get the, 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 the vibes. Yeah, yeah. So they've done it very, very cleverly where when they're at the top, their fans, they're giving it uh, very, very much. And I don't know if they're like new fans because it's the new stadium. I've like, been waiting so long to get into the stadium and whatever, like, you know, I thought they were very, very vocal, like, you know. So, um, yeah, they was really up for it. And um, the best thing for me, and I'll be really honest, like, forget about the result, the goal, the game and everything like that. There was a moment in that game when they was on top of us, really giving it to us. They was dominating us, winning their tackles, doing everything like that. And the atmosphere was electric. 
and we dug in and held on and, and, and then reasserted ourselves. And I thought we was the better team towards the end, like, you know, and um, I, I thought it was, uh, uh, you know, an absolute um, joy to be there yesterday, like, you know, and, and proud of my team as well, because I thought Arsenal yesterday were the real deal. I do believe that they were the real deal. The only problem that I've got, two problems I've got with us at this moment in time after this, uh, Martinelli has got to, to pick up his game. He's nowhere near at the standards of last season. Nowhere near. Um, at a poor second half. And when you're 1-1 one, one at Anfield, one of the big clubs, can someone please tell me how we've got a one against five situation from a corner? I, I, it is schoolboy stuff. I, I I can't believe it. You're one one at Anfield. You're playing really, really well. And really, honestly, guys, you know <laughs> that is more down to Liverpool, not taking. Oh, 100%. It's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Declan Rice done well, but come on, he should never be put into that situation. But other than that, and, that, and that's something that I think that they've got to look at for me, like because it was a big worry because I thought we played so well yesterday, and if we'd have lost that two one. We'd be sitting here very, very differently this morning because you know, and I would do really, really well and ended up losing the game. And more importantly, Jordan would have picked up three points. But that's another story, like you know. But um, that for me was a bit of a worry. But other than that, you know, I'm going to say this now. I I didn't really notice that too much until getting home and watching the highlights last last night because I felt that I had to do me me job. Um, because we was on this morning, but yeah, all in all, though, I thought we was brilliant. Like you know, um, at first twenty minutes again, it was it was deja vu, wasn't it? Like and just when I f- I'm gonna have to keep my mouth shut, yeah. I turned around to Julian. I said to him like, we could win this three or four the way we're playing. <laughs> well, I really did. Oh, think- <laughs> and then one mistake, bang. And then I'm thinking like you know, it was yeah, but like, I-, I thought that first twenty minutes sensational. Hundred percent. Well, while I work out if Jordan's connection is stable. Enough, sorry, uh, sorry, I just someone was phoning me. Sorry, sorry. Don't worry, I'll give you a couple more minutes because I'm gonna head oh, over. Oh, someone to phone. Let, let, can we put that into a point deduction? <laughs> huh? Shut up. Yeah. Especially, it's, 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 sorry, especially go to Jess anyway because uh, you, um, you don't want to hear what I got to say yet. So let's 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 hear some some positivity oh. first. Oh. Okay. okay. Go on, Jess. Go on, deliver. Okay. So, am I right in saying that? Jordan had his prediction was that we were going to lose. Yeah. Yeah. 2-1. Two, 2-1. Two, one. Two, two, one. Oh, well, then how can you be upset? How can you be upset? How? How can you be upset you thought we were going to lose? So you should be pleasantly surprised that we got something. That's all I'm saying. If I predict we're going to lose and we get a point, I'm happy. I'll, but, I'll explain, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you listen. 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 Um, look, we. I went into that game feeling like we would not lose. But I wasn't that confident on a win. That's that's just the truth. I think I had already kind of counted whatever was going to happen on Zinchenko's side. I already counted that. I was like, okay, that's a, that's that's already a goal. Like I already know they're going to get us at least once on that side. And they targeted him like they should have. Any good team is going to target that side. Period. Um, and so after that, I thought we were really good. Um, I thought we took our goal well. I don't think Gabriel gets anywhere near enough praise for his performance yesterday or how good he's been this entire season. So I just want to at least put it out there that Gabriel was outrageous and he had to play on the side with Sinchenko. So he was doing almost like a double job, you know, did a good, really good job at, at a certain point. Salah was like nullified. He didn't do anything. So I thought he was fantastic defensively that three of Declan Rice, Saliba and Gabriel kept us in that game, kept us, you know, in it, and have also been probably our best players this season consistently. So I'm not surprised that they went to Anfield and just did the business, you know. Our main issue this whole season for me, especially in these last five games, has been we've been talking about this the same, like every single game. We don't finish our chances. We get opportunities. We don't make the right decisions. We don't finish our chances. And I can't help but think back to that one chance that we had where Saka probably should have went down. And then after he should have went down, Martinelli has to put that in the back of the net. He just has to. But how many times have we said that in the last, like, I don't know, six, mm. eight months that why aren't we putting these chances away? So same things kind of like coming back. But I can't I can't ignore the fact that that was a really good performance from the team overall. I thought everybody got stuck in 
everybody was up for the fight. I know some people were better than others, but man, like there are times that we had gone to Anfield and it, we just knew it was a certain loss. We were never going to get anything. We we're not getting out of there with anything. And I pulled up um, Man City's like last five results at Anfield just to see if I'm like tripping or not. Like they lost three out of their last five and they got a draw and a win. It's not an easy place to go for anybody. So to get out of there with a point, I'm happy, but I do still have in the back of my mind, like, do we have the players that are going to finish the chances when we really need them to? Or do we just have to go out and get somebody because I'm starting to really question it? You know, how many times are we going to go in these big games and not finish those chances? Yeah. yeah. I just want to pick up on that, like, you know, a couple of things. I'm not having a go at Jess there, like, you know. Um, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I think you have to bring Shinchenko oh, yeah. into that. Like, you know, I, I think that, yeah, he had a couple of bad things and everything like that. But, you know, he done all right on, on Salah. And this is what it's really annoys me a little bit, like, you know. Um, when And I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. Salah is one hell of a footballer. And when he when he is going to beat players, he is going to beat players, you know what I mean, like at the end of the day. And and he, and he I think if you're going to criticise Shinchenko, it's more about giving the ball away than he's defending. Yes, he got done with it with the uh with the one against um uh the goal. But where was where was Gabriel? Where was um our holding midfielder to cover that position? Every time Saka got the ball, yeah, that endo come over and, and doubled up on that. We didn't double up on him like, you know, you cannot go to a game like that and let Mo Salah just have all the all the space of Anfield at times. But I think at the end of the day, we kept him fairly quiet most of the game. Like so I, I think oh, Shinchenko yeah. needs a little bit of praise for that. I know that he, he that some of the things that he did yesterday, yeah. like he give the ball away, but there were times when he when he took the gamble and, and put us on the front foot. And um some of the mistakes yeah. he made didn't cut the you're only saying that because it didn't cost us. I mean he made I'm, at least mm -hmm. three errors that yeah, you know? yeah, but that's mm -hmm. trying to play circus, trying to play mm -hmm. through is that when you're one nil up one one, one do you do defenders. that? I, I am like I, I'm that's the thing. It's like I always take into account that what he gives us going forward usually outweighs the mistakes that he makes yeah. going the other way. I always take that into account, but there are just some times where I'm like could you not try to do like a Croy pitch and get it taken off your toe? Like those are the things that I just cannot, I, I can't understand, you know, and he's 26, 27. Now he ain't changing. But, but, uh, but, but, but Jess, he's at the point of, and I agree with exactly what you're saying there, but he, ain't, he continued to do it all game. So is he being told to be doing that? Like, you know what I mean? At, at the end of it, like, you know, that, that is, I'm, I'm, I'm not having a go at, in more artillery a lot because there were times that he there was one when he went for put, put it if if they actually got it they're, they're running at our goal and, and it, it turned into be a, yeah. a, 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 a one where we got a, a shot across the, uh, the goal in the second half it is risky football I I, I do think that and I'm, I'm with you there are times just clear your lines um, but I, I, I don't think he's going to change and to his credit as bad as he'd done it on a few occasions he continues to keep doing it so he's got a lot of confidence in himself, but I, I'm with you on that. Like, you know, some we, we could have got punished on three or four occasions, and we have done in the past with things like that. Well, and, let's be real, too. Like, Timber and Tommy, if they had been fit, he wouldn't be out there. And yeah. so, for me, yeah, I, I think always have that back in my mind. Right, yeah. have been there, so, yeah. and it wasn't only him. To be, listen, I've come to terms. I think he's an awful defender, what he brings to us in the attacking sense. Um, it's it's a credit in the first eight months when he joined the club. I think you know we, he opened our eyes to what that position can become because we was heavily behind the Tierney, who's a traditional left back. Mm. After the first eight months, I think that's when some of his things, you know, his his deficiencies get started getting exposed a little bit, culminating in that Liverpool moment and whatnot towards the end of the season. This season so far, I think his his liability has outweighed the attacking contribution he brings, but. He's still he's still a good player. It's just that these I'm with Jess. I mean Timber and Tomiyasu to be out injured oh. when really both are probably going to start this game ahead of him. It is quite unfortunate. I can't really look at anyone uh, else. Turkish, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I also think you have to take into account that that right side with Trent and and so is 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 very very good. It's probably their best part of their game. Like, I didn't really think that they caused us that many problems anywhere else on the park. Diaz was very, very quiet. 
kept. I was very, very quiet. But them two there are very, very good. And I, I do. I, I, I agree with you, you two. If if Tommy Asu's fit, he plays there. And I've said if Tommy Asu's fit. They don't score that goal because he gets his head on it, like you know. Yeah, what I mean, yeah. like and covers. If you have a look at Arsenal this year, over the last few years, Ben White and, and Tommy Asu, whoever it is at that, so don't get exposed with that long diagonal ball. And I'm one hundred percent sure if Tommy Asu was playing, because like, they target that long sort of diagonal ball quite a lot. Um, and, and Tommy Asu gets the header on that, like you know, being a bit taller as well, like you know. So, go on. Let's uh, let, let's let's hear it, Jordan. We. we... What's brewing in your mind? Right. So apparently it is down to me to play the role of Grinch on the podcast today. I've actually been really positive on the podcast in the past four or five episodes. Oh, my God. You lot want to finish second again. You lot are just being so nice. It's pissing me off. Oh, my God. All right. I, to, to first of all, Jess's point, she rightly says, if you predict a defeat and you get a draw, that's a nice surprise. I did say when I said I predicted the defeat, I was only predicting a defeat because it's been so long since we've won at Anfield. I just can't, until it happens, I find it hard to believe it can happen. Even when we play well at Anfield, and that's, two games, that's twice in a row now, we still can't win. So I find it very hard to predict anything other than a loss, at best a draw. Hence why I thought, well, we, nine times out of 10, we lose at Anfield. So that's why I went for a, a defeat. But all the other metrics made me think with, we should be getting at least a draw. Let's start with Zinchenko. Oh, my God. Um, the defending for Zinchenko on that goal, it's so bad. And everybody keeps trying to justify the goal by saying, but well, Salah's world-class does that to everybody. First of all, no, he doesn't, although he is world-class. And second of all, I've just done a radio show. I mean, he's discussed this game from last night. Some Arsenal fans just called in and said, oh, the Zinchenko issue we have is a little bit like what Liverpool had with Trent. Defensively, a bit suspect, but offensively good. I had to lock him off. I had to lock off the caller. I'm like, bro, are you smoking budge? What are you talking about? <laughs> For every single goal that Trent let in, he was getting three assists, you madman. He was scoring five goals a season, you idiot. Don't ever try and compare the Trent dilemma with Zinchenko. As you said, Turkish, Zinchenko last season, I actually think his positives did outweigh his negatives. We've always known, even at City, he wasn't a brilliant defender. We've all known that. This year, he's making at least two errors a game. And now they're costing goals. That, that defending for the Salah goal, guys, it's embarrassing. A, we all know Salah likes to cut inside. Cool. Salah's good enough that he can do you on the outside. He can also go outside and do you. Cool. Now, what does your brain say? What's the higher chance of conceding a goal? Letting Salah cut inside or letting Salah cut outside and then go beat you and then cut it back? Send him on his right foot. And if he cuts it back and they score, what can you do? So for me, it's brain dead from Zinchenko. You quoted his age. He's not a kid. He's not a kid anymore. And I accept that he's our third choice left back. But come on, man. It's not good enough. Second, because he wasn't even the worst player for me on the pitch. Let me shout about Martinelli. I thought Martinelli was awful. I thought he was awful yesterday. I've been on to Martinelli for about a year now. I've kept the same energy. His decision-making is so, so poor. It's so bad. I would go as far as to say, watch the, game, watch the game back if you get a chance, guys. I would go as far as to say, I think every decision he made was the wrong one. When it was time to go outside, he's passing it. When it's time to shoot, he's dribbling. When it's time to stop the ball, he's going on. Almost everything he did was incorrect. His work rate, I believe, blinds everybody to actually his output. It blinds everybody. I like Martinelli. But the energy that the fan base give him, I need to see more. I need to see more. I thought he was rubbish yesterday. I thought he was so ineffective. He did nothing. Now, I'll give him a little bit of sympathy on the chance that he missed with the open goal because there were two defenders on the line. Hit the target. Doesn't, doesn't Hit what the you target. Said. Doesn't what you said stretch across the front three, though? Because Saka and oh, Jesus... I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. The issue I have with the front three is that individually, they're all brilliant football players. But I don't know if you've noticed this, but they don't, they don't link up very often. How often do you see Saka looking for Martinelli at the back post or Jesus laying off for Martinelli? I see Odegaard linking up with players. I see Rice linking up with players. I very rarely see Saka and Martinelli doing anything, any kind of link up. 
I don't see as a threesome them working as a threesome. They just seem to be individual, cut inside, we might score a goal. Jesus, I said on the last podcast, I needed Jesus to go to Anfield and be the striker that we've not seen at Anfield since Robin Van Persie. I'll accept, I thought all four centre-backs on the pitch were amazing. I thought all four centre-backs were brilliant. So he had a tough time against Van Dijk and Canate. I thought Canate was the best player on the pitch, not Saliba, although Saliba was amazing. But come on, Jesus, you've got to give me something. And I said at the end of last season, I said this to you guys, when you were all telling me that Saka and Martinelli were world-class, I said, it's not for me, but fine. If we don't upgrade Jesus in the summer, this was last season what I said, Martinelli and Saka will have to get minimum 15 goals Minimum, I said, for us to be in the, in the mix to, to win a title again. Martinelli ain't getting 15 goals this season. Saka might just get 15 goals this season. So I need Jesus to do more. And whilst I agree with you guys that he's a brilliant player, he's a joy to watch, very skillful, works hard, links play. I'm down for all of that. I keep telling you, let's get to March and then chat to me about great link-up play and chat to me about skillful and chat to me about all that stuff then when you get two chances in the game, you better score one. Because all this link-up play, I said it before again, Lacazette, we have the same energy. I'm not comparing Lacazette and Jesus. But when you said that he works hard, he brings the ball down. Can you put the ball in the back of the net, please? My final gripe is an overall gripe. The fact that we seem to be taking a point away from Anfield when I think we could have won that game, for me, is a disappointment. Because it's not very, very often that we go to Anfield and at the bare minimum match them, if not better them. I think last year we were better than them overall. I know the last half an hour they put it on us. We were maybe fortunate to get out. But we've been impressive at Anfield twice that. in a row. I don't know about that. Okay, at best on par. At best on par. I don't par, know about right? that. So that second half was a 5 0 second half last season. They, they absolutely obliterated us last season. I don't, that, I don't know about that. But, but, was but, like Neo in goal. Okay, okay. But the point I'm making is, is that last night, I think we could have won that match. And I think well, if it had been a bit yeah. more, if it had been a bit more ruthless, clinical, and a bit more intelligent with our decision making, I think there's goals to be scored. I'm in the pub screaming, why are we doing what we're doing? On the counter, I, 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 my mind was blown. And if I hear one more person, I'm on the 17th floor of a building in London Bridge right now. If I hear one more person don't, talk about... Don't, 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 don't. Well, listen, if I hear one more person talk about the fact that we're top at Christmas, I'm jumping off this bridge. I'm jumping oh, off this bridge. Oh, we're top at Christmas. We're top at Christmas. We're top Lee, at I'll do Christmas. it. I'll do it, Lee. <laughs> Who the hell cares? Who I mean, cares? We're top uh, do you know what, Jonah? I'm going I'm to agree with you a little bit there. Oh, my God. I, I am pleased we've got a point, as, as we've said, you know what I mean? I am a little bit disappointed, though, that we didn't go on and win that game or go and win that game. And one of the reasons why I'm disappointed... It was there to be it, won. It, we was, it was there to be won, but it was also there to be lost as well, Jordan. And I. So I, 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 I take on board what you're saying, right? But one of the things that really is getting on my go, and when everybody goes on about Mikel being this great manager and, and want to do everything they say about Arteta, at the end of the day, when Manchester City and Liverpool were better than us, Right, they come to the Emirates and they won. All right, we're better than Liverpool at the moment. I think we're better than them, much, much better than them last season, and we've not gone there and won. And that is my only little bit of a. If I've got a little bit of a gripe, and I and I have to agree with you on this, Jordan. Like you know, what I mean, our front three is not, and you can bring in Shinchenko in that as well, right? And nowhere near at the level that they were last season, and. and you know, Martinelli is becoming away. I thought he was okay in the first half. I thought there were some runs that he'd done and he, he, he linked up a little bit. Second half, everything he'd done was completely wrong. He was just so... I'm surprised he stayed on longer than what he did. Uh, and, and the thing with Jesus is... And the problem that I've got with Jesus, and, and I think this is where we've got to go and get somebody. He'd done a bit of skill yesterday when the ball was in the air against Van Dijk. He chested it down, drove it across the mid... Drove it across the goal. A poacher... Taps it in. Every single player, I watched it, I've watched it again on there. Martinelli, Odegaard, Stuck all on their heels. All on their heels. No one with that natural movement of just going in and tapping it in like, but, you know, on their haunches. So I do agree that that is something that they've got to look at. I think that they've got to look at it like, you know, but I, I still think Jesus. there's a lot of positives from I, that. I, I love Jesus. We're trying to go for a title here. And for me, we can't be playing like that 
and getting a point and thinking that point might be great at the end of the season. It might be enough. And we have no divine well, no, right. Fine. We have no divine right to go to Anfield and win. But what I'm saying is it's, it's kind of akin to what you're saying. Now we're a top team. When you perform like that, you have to find a way to win. Yeah, you have I, to I win. Agree. But what do you mean I, perform I like that, though? Because as much as I don't want to... Listen, Arsenal, have, I think, stood up to the test, had moments mm -hmm. in the game where, where, you know, it looked like we could get a couple goals. But the reality is, I think I think a point was fair on both sides. When you, when it, it was fair. Think, it was fair. Yeah, it was when you look fair. overall, and, and I think okay. this is where we... Because I don't disagree with most things you said, Jordan. Maybe I just haven't said it as aggressively as you, you might have liked. But Zinchenko, awful, awful defender. Um, you know, that mistake is not one we haven't seen before. Martinelli, very poor. Only thing about Martinelli for me is when he comes off, your outlet goes. When you're under pressure, he's the one over the top that he can get on there. Trussard's not going to do that for you. Saka doesn't do that for you. Martinelli's the only one that does that for you. But he was poor. The front line's been poor. I think Odegaard, you know, moments in the middle, dwelling on the ball a bit too much, wasn't, you know, swift enough. But that's tactical. You know, the transition sometimes, instead of kind of releasing the handbrake, we, we kind of reset, which we're top of the league. So I can't argue too much. But that second half started in the same manner the second half started at Anfield last season. And that first 15, 20 minutes, I could only see one thing happening. That was Liverpool going on to win this game 2-1, 3-1. I, I, I think it's really been... good too, guys. Sorry. Like, I just feel like it's, a little bit like disingenuous to be like, okay, well, we're this good team, so we need to be figuring out ways to win. Liverpool were not bad yesterday by any stretch of the imagination. No, they were at right. home, they were good, and there was like a 30 minute period in the second half where Turkish is saying they could, they, they could have agree, you no, know? agree, so, agree. And like, I think this idea that like I could understand more the Villa game, maybe Newcastle, but for me, Anfield, a point. The, the formula it's, it's not a bad is always, to um, me, the formula is always the same. You go away to your like a media I, rival I, I, or whatever, you don't lose away from home yep. and you beat them at home. That's always that is spot on. I, I, don't spot necessarily, on. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I think that that is the sort of mentality you think you have when you're not in a good place you go to a top ground a point that's a good point we're going for a league and we're good i looked at them yesterday and thought to myself they are still a year to 18 months away from winning a title they're not quite i think they're a year off it i think they're still a year off it we're meant to be ready this year so as we're ready this year i'm thinking find a way you've got the play look at our team at anfield last year and look at our team at anfield this year come on yeah but you know, you know, I, I, I agree you've got I, I think saliba should... in there now yeah, I, yeah. I think you're missing the point here, like, you know what I mean? I, I think we was much better last year. I, I really do. I really do think that we was a much better team last year. But really? you, don't, don't you forget about certain things in that game. You have to understand that Liverpool are at home. They've got the crowd going. They, they've got good players in their side. They, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, and, and at one stage there, that they put it on us. I have to say this, and I, I admire yeah, us yeah. for this. I, I, they really put it on us, yeah. and we... We we've held that, and then we went on and took control of the game again. I think that is a big, big point for uh, in in the in the context of the game. It's a good Last point. It's season, a good point. We were a much better team, and we lost the we lost the uh, we we lost we lost control of it, and we couldn't regain the momentum and go. I think that that we there was a moment there. I think oh, this is going to be a hot. This is yeah. going to be forty five minutes. But we wrestled the game back. And went on again. I think that's a big, big thing. It is. How many teams do that at Anfield? Months. How many yes. teams? How many teams wrestle a game back in the second half at Anfield in, in a I game mean, of that magnitude? Because it was a big game considering it what was. was on I, the I, I think yeah. it's a big thing, to, uh, Turkish. Uh, but, really but, how, but how many teams are going for a title? Most teams take yeah. a point at Anfield and, yeah. and they're, they're thankful. We're but trying like, to win a league. Like here. Just and when you're on Man, top, Man City, like, last five games. I, they, I hear that. Yeah. They yeah, lost yeah, three, that. drew one, and won okay. one. Like, I accept that. I accept serious. that. Like, I, I, I get what you guys are saying. It is frustrating. Like, I did feel very disappointed at the end of the game because I just felt like, ah, oh, they were there for the taking. But so were we. And Liverpool yes. were better this season than they were last season. Let's be real. They're not even. They're not even in a rebuild. They're not. They took one year where they were crap. Now they're good again. You know, they're they're still almost the same Liverpool. Let's yeah, but yeah, but Jess, I think I th yeah, but Jess, I think we're better than we were last year as well. Well, I I do I do too, but they got better, we got better. It's still a draw. 
I, I think we potentially can if we, we get certain players going about. I spoke to a Liverpool fan, and I think there's a very important thing what I what 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 I think is it when they went to Manchester City uh, a few weeks ago, right? I said to this Liverpool fan, like, "What was your feeling when you come away from Anfield? Uh, so uh, from Man City? Oh, well, well, happy we got a point. Well, I'll tell you that now. Manchester City fans would have been disappointed that they didn't win that game because they was at home. But Liverpool fans were all pleased that they got a point. Liverpool fans were disappointed yesterday because they was at home and they didn't nail it. Where I think at the end of the day, we look at it, and Jesse's exactly right now, where I'll be disappointed about today, or yesterday, sorry, is if when we play them in a month's time in the league game and we don't beat them. If we Period. beat them home and we draw away from home, I, I, and I'm taking that. If we go to Manchester City and draw, we, we've done our job against the top yeah. team. It's then what we do against other yeah. teams that's going to yeah. win when we win this league. So I look at that now. That game at the Emirates I've, is a massive game now. I've, I've oh. got some praise, just a brief praise as well to go with to go with the criticism. Oh. Um, I thought in the first half, uh, shut up. I thought in the first half, uh, Odegaard and in particular Havertz were brilliant. Havertz in the second half, did he play? But in the first half, I thought Havertz was brilliant. Um, who I, I think the back the back two. As I mentioned, I thought all four centre backs were, were were amazing. Yeah, but I thought our back two, they are the best. They're the, they're the best partnership in the league now. They are the best partnership in the league. That that, that for me isn't 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 uh, a, um, a worthy debate anymore. I know Saliba got man of the match. I actually thought of the four, he was probably the third best. I thought Van Dijk was the fourth best. Funny enough, and I thought he was good. I thought Canate was good. I thought Gabriel was second. Um, but I thought our two were absolutely brilliant. I thought Declan Rice in front of them was just Declan Rice. I don't know. I don't know how we talk about Declan Rice anymore because nah. it's just we're saying the same things. I still want some more on the ball from him, but you know my thoughts on that. But that aside, that aside, I thought Declan Rice is just he's just an ever present beast. He's, I thought the amount of tackles we won in the first half, we won a lot of tackles and second balls. Um, I was really impressed Im impressed by that. Um, and as Lee said, or Leo just said, I thought we rode the, when they, they, they put it on us for about 30 minutes in that second half and we rode it and came through it. That deserves credit. I thought David Raya had a fairly stable match. Like he didn't do nothing too, he too, too crazy. He, he didn't throw, throw it away. away. So, you know, that's cool. Um, I thought the subs were a bit ineffective, but I, I thought they were definitely positives. I think a point at Anfield is never a bad result. I'm just watching the game thinking, what is up with our front three? Because Odegaard and Havertz yeah. were cooking. They were cooking, yeah. but they were just cooking. But it was a bit like, guys up front, what are you guys doing? We're trying to help you out. Help us help you. And I just think in them kind of games, I need Saka to announce himself now as the guy. I need Martinelli to announce. I need, I need one of those three, if not all three, to do something. And I just thought they just there was no synergy or chemistry between the three of them. And it was a shame. But yeah. anyway... I've made Can I have one little point though, like that I've been thinking because I, I wanted to see how Odegaard was going to play. You guys are a massive Odegaard person. I was backs against the wall. I'm always going to fight for him. I really am. But I was like, mm. you need to stand up in this game. You cannot go missing because if you go missing in this game, it's going to be hell to pay. Okay. And I thought he was really good. Mm. But I Agree. think when you think about the amount of times that we've went to big grounds and we haven't had a good DM with us, no offense to Thomas Partey. He's just not really there in the big games. He, he's usually not fit. I think that makes a huge difference for Odegaard. I think you have to have that platform. Declan Rice does that for Odegaard. So like I kind of, it may be a little bit like looking through the weeds to try to see something, but the amount of times that we went to Anfield or we went to the Etihad or went to big grounds and there was no Thomas Partey, I do think that that affects Odegaard a little bit. So I'm really glad that he had a good game because, listen, people were already like, he's going to have a ghost game. And I was like, please don't have a ghost game. I can't mm -hmm. handle it this time. I wish I he got he the good. Day, but he was fantastic. I thought he was, I, I thought was very good. He was just fine. one thing. That, sorry, just, just one thing that yeah. really did. I'm going to say it pissed me off yesterday. Okay. How many of players were slipping over? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's uh, wrong with the pitch. Cost us the goal for Martinelli, if you have a look at it. Uh, he slips before he takes that chance. Uh, Saka slips over more than once. Odegaard mm. slips over when he um, for the handball, which probably could have been given as an handball. Uh, ben White slipped over. Um, uh, there, was, uh, there was somebody else that slipped over. Um, I can't remember who it was. The three players that didn't slip over are my three, the three, the three, the three, 
you know, the, the three amigos, I'm going to call them now, Saliba, Gabriel, and, and Declan Rice. Declan Rice, actually, yeah, Declan Rice did slip over right. once, and he, and he still won the ball. You know proper, I mean? boots. proper football like, boots. You know proper football boots. Proper football boots. Was it the boots or... Can oh, we I don't know what it was. A little know. bit? I mean, what did but they Saka do? Saka was like on ice at times, yes. He really was, yeah, you know what I mean? Was. He must have he slipped was. over four or five. Martinelli, you know, in important positions, slipped over. Come on. The professional footballers uh, that have been out there and doing a warm-up and getting out, get your boots right. I, I thought it was very, very poor, that. And it I, cost I've, us. Cost I, us. I, I, Sorry, Lee. I've heard a lot of people talk about Saka being, I think he might mention it, being like triple marked. And I've, I've seen him be double marked, but not triple. Yesterday at times, he was literally triple marked. Right. It was hilarious. It was so funny. Like, there were times where it was, I was like, in the pub watching it thinking, there's literally three players coming over towards him. It's hilarious. So that's why I have a little bit of sympathy, more maybe for him than I do Martinelli, because... I mean, when you're double teamed, it's, it's what, what are you going to do? But when you've got three players around you, it's like, guys, like, someone's got to be free, right? Well, <laughs> they've, got, they've got to figure that out, though, because they, 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 I can't be here in May saying Saka's been triple teamed. There's something you figure out. What, is he the first Is he the first player in the world that's been double teamed, triple teamed? Or... Listen, no, we're not no, we're no, not no. saying that. We're not, say, we're not even talking about this. If somebody gets on the end of Jesus's cross, Saka's cross, Martinelli makes that one chance. I'm sorry. Yeah. The, that changes the game. I think you're only going to get a couple of chances against Liverpool and you're going to get triple team. But I just, I could not believe nobody was in that box. I know exactly what yeah. you guys are talking about. Nobody was there. Nobody was running. What's That's why you need on? Eddie coming in to, to finish is that, it. Is that yeah. what we need? <laughs> 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 Listen, it's not my words. It's, that's what people tell me. Um, but I do, you know what? I, I'm not going to dwell on it because we do need to keep it moving. But Ben White actually had a good game, in my opinion, as well. I think he had moments, but he 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 pressured high up high up top. He was part of that whole um, first 20 minutes where we were getting tackled yeah, after yeah. tackle. I think still Ben White. I think at, still not at the level of last season, no Turkish. He was. He isn't. But Diaz, quiet yeah, as hell. Not. Nunes yeah. came on and had one one I, moment. I, I, done well. I actually thought defensively he was to last year's level. I think offensively he offered yeah. nothing. But I thought defensively he actually was back to that was yeah. that was last year's Ben White. I thought you know I'm not Ben White's biggest fan, but I thought he was brilliant yesterday. I thought he was very good. Good too. So he only got, got cooked like one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. one time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. ooh. Was that the Nunez one? Yeah, Nunez. Yeah, Nunez. Drop of the shoulder, he was off. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but he was aggressive. In, he was aggressive yesterday. He was back like, he was. more aggressive he was. than he has been normal. He I'll, was. Give, I'll give him that. Like, I'm a big Ben Mowat fan. I think he's fantastic. But Same. I don't think he's another one that's at, at the levels of last season. But my, my thing is now, if those players get to those levels of last season, wow. Wow. You know, it's going to be an exciting, exciting few months. I really do. If they get to those levels, yeah. If it clicks, then yeah, we've yeah. got. A lot I, of, I really do. Yeah. Sorry, f f final point. So before you keep moving, Turkey, just my, the other frustration for me is the fact that I, I'm not looking at Liverpool as our rivals. I'm looking at City as our rivals. Right? If you're City and you just won the World Club Cup and you've just come off the pitch, you've seen that Villa have drawn yeah, and you've seen like Arsenal and Liverpool have, played, have drawn. Right? You're thinking, oh, result. <laughs> Result. Do you know what I mean? I just thought it was a chance to kind of. It was a great day for Man City yeah. yesterday. It was a brilliant day for Man City. But anyway, I've made. I've they said come my back piece. and play ever. They come back and play ever in a way where the, the form City were on going into that Club World Cup and the form that ever and are on, albeit listen, they lost to Tottenham. But when if you actually watched the game, they should have got something out of it in the end. I think that could be a difficult test for City. So it depends how they come back. If they come back and beat Everton away comfortably. Obviously, then they, you know, that game in hand would make it three points. I don't know when that's to come. Then, obviously, we've got a bigger problem on our hands. But if they come back, fooling. draw. Say that again, Jess? I said, they're not fooling me. Second half <laughs> of the season, they're going to do what they always do. Like, be serious. You think, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. And I've got yeah, hope I, I, They're not fooling me this time. Last season, I got got. I was like, oh, it's not the same city. It's fine. We're fine. You They're see me, Jess. I'm, I'm the opposite. Last season, I didn't get got, but this season, I'm getting got. I can't lie. I'm looking at City, thinking, no Gundogan, no Mares. Is it the same? Are they going to be able... is back now, guys? <laughs> yeah, but is he going to be the same player? I know, you know, when you start thinking uh, these things. Seventy-five percent of the player, he's better than what a lot of people got. Let's be all, let's be serious. That's, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Anyway, we will see what happens with Man City when they're back. Hit the like button, people. Make sure you do that first and foremost. Are we on a thousand yet? 
come on Christmas Eve special um, holiday periods and make sure you go over and support Jess's channel as well. It's in the description, people. She knows Arsenal. It's uh, great. Now becoming a regular on Ferrero. What do you say? It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Like, yeah, yeah. do you really watch? What's the last thing I did? I've seen, I've seen all your clips and the clips are okay. engaging to me. So he only watches highlights, me. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Highlights. <laughs> <laughs> highlights. <laughs> I, set my, I set myself up there, didn't I? That was a set up. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> bloody yeah. Uh, oh, bloody yeah. Uh, and bloody listen, yeah. people, heads up, a heads up. On Boxing Day, there's a very special episode of the Unfair Play Quiz. If you don't know what the Unfair Play Quiz is, then go over and search that on the AFTV YouTube channel. Me and James have taken part already. We went up against Laurie and Ty. I can tell you that we won that one. Me and James won that one. So for Christmas, we thought we'll do a special for every Arsenal team. You know, it seems to have broken off into two units over the last few months with points deductions and scandals and, and, and you know, partners in bathrooms and all of that. So... We decided to do an quiz. We, we went two on two, me and James, Jordan and Lee. And it was a very special episode of the Unfair Play Quiz. So make sure you are there, people. Make sure you are subscribed. Put the notification bell on on Boxing Day that comes out. And there's a very special show coming out on Christmas Day as well. Nothing to do with me, nothing to do with Jordan, nothing to do with Jess. But I believe Lee Judges is involved. So if you like yourself a bit of lead judges, make sure you're subscribed because over the next couple of days, he's in a couple of very special AFTV shows. So make sure you're here, people. Let's keep it moving. Um, what we got next? What we got next? Not really another topic on the on the cards aside, aside from the next game, game week 19, the halfway point of the season. And we're going into a stretch of three London derbies, starting with West Ham at the Emirates. Um How's everyone feeling about that? Obviously, West Ham coming off the back of getting thumped at, at, at Anfield and, and then turning it around and beating United. Jared Bowen seems to be having the season of his life. Mm. Kudos, who is a player I really wanted at Arsenal. He's really kicked on. Paqueta, mm. I don't know what those betting charges did for him, but he's another player this season. Mm -hmm. um, Crept I'll, up, haven't they? Are we up. threatened? Are we threatened? Or do you think yeah, six in the league now have come from crept up, haven't they? Like, you know, um, got to say that... Um, they was poor in midweek, but justified. You know what I mean? Like he had to, um, to his credit, they had to come back and beat Manchester United. I didn't see the game listening on the radio. It didn't sound like it was a great game, um, but but they got the job done, and they've crept up quietly. Like you know, sixth place now. I think at the end of the the end of the day, after losing their best player, look, 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 look listen, we know what uh, Declan Rice is like to lose him and 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 be pushing for <laughs> Europa League. You have to give them a lot of admiration to the manager and, and, and the team. They've bought well. It's going to be a difficult game. Um, why it's going to be difficult is because the pressure's on us. We've got to win the game. Simple as that. You know, we can't um, go there and, and 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 not be on our game. I think that we will be. I think that we're a different animal with it when it comes at, at home. But I, 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 I'm being impressed with West Ham, if I'll be honest. You know what I mean? Like, they've, they're up there. Um Beat Spurs away from home. So, um, you know, um, they're looking at doing the North London double. Um, we've got to be on it, guys. Simple as that. If we're not, they have got players, if you just said Turkish, that can uh, can punish us. So, sloppy defending from Shinchenko or sloppy play from somebody, they will punish you, you know. And I think that their midfield is as good as Liverpool's, if not better. So, we've got to be right on it. I'm yeah. very confident. Just, I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, I just, I am. Um, I'm sorry. Like this is how exactly how I felt about the Brighton game. He, of course, they can hurt us. Blah blah blah. All that kind of stuff. Of course. Um, but watching them even against Manchester United at home, they were all right. They really weren't. United are. Yeah. It's true. They weren't. Yeah. Right. They're, they're in the room, Like it was smelly, and it, it felt it, like I get that they beat Spurs. Right? They beat Spurs. But Spurs really should have won that game. Let's be honest. They, yeah. But they have the yeah. Kudus and Bowen and these guys that on one opportunity, they, they can hurt you. So I get that. But Moy's ball against Arteta, let's be serious. We should be winning that game, you know, and feeling confident that we're going to win it. Every single team can hurt you. Anybody could get got. But I do feel like at home, I think we're going to, I think we're going to do the business. They, they're, they're doing all right. But I'd be watching West Ham and I'm like, this is stinky. We should be beating them. Seriously. They concede goals as well. We've just got to put our finishing boots on. 
Mm. Yeah. Side cat challenges, yeah. Yeah. But, but what about lineup wise? I mean, we've gone into the last couple of games, same as a lot of injuries and positions that we might entertain changes. Um, no Havertz. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, oh, no, it's suspended, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. well brought up. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting one. I guess Jorginho comes in or I think, I think that's a good thing. Smith Rowe should come in. No? Trossard, maybe. I don't know. That's a real good question. Uh, uh, well, yeah, what, for me. I'd lean towards Smith Rowe, Trossard rather than Jorginho or El Nene, just to add another. We're at home. But that's it, too. Does, does anybody trust Smith Rowe? That's the problem. Do you trust him? Well, has he done enough to earn? Yeah. We've got to find know. out if we can trust him at some point, regardless if you don't trust him or not. Yeah, yeah I'm going to Jorginho. I'm going to Jorginho. Jorginho Rice yeah. in the, yeah. the Havertz ha row. Is anybody dropping Martinelli? No. No. Nah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but also because I think, you know how it goes, we're going to a busy period of the year. Rotation needs to start be factored in. So you start thinking of the games you're going to have when the Champions League starts again in February onwards. So you want to try and get your rotations where possible now. Give a guy a game off here. Give Sack off a game off there. Do you know what I mean? So I personally would drop would drop Martinelli for this game. He's such a key f asset yeah. for us in the attack, though. He's the only one out of the three that's got that. He's still threatening. Yeah, yeah I, I think you got to go with him, like. Yeah. If he if I, he has I, another game like that, then maybe at Fulham bring in Trossard. But for me, I, I, I you know he's he's that good. You've got to let him ride this out and hope that he comes good. But that's the point. Yeah, without going into a Marte discussion, I don't know if he is that good that during a bad patch he warrants keeping his spot. Like Fair some point. players, some players are that good that you think he's going for a bit of a dirty run, but it's Salah. Or it's Messi, it's, it's Martinelli. Like he's going through a really a real stinker at the moment, in my opinion. And I just don't think he's that good that Trossard, who you guys again talk up highly, doesn't deserve a chance to come in in his favorite now, position. For me, if you're taking it, you would start Trossard. For me, I'd, I know Trossard is the backup, but if you want someone that brings similar to what Martinelli brings, then Reese Nelson would be the guy for me because he's the one that's that's direct. But, you know, he, he hasn't had much game time this season. Yeah. He hasn't been relied upon. Mm. I think when he has played, he's played on the right, if I'm not mistaken, maybe maybe a couple of times on the left this season. Mm. Um, but Martinelli just brings that, that, that energy. And yes, he's been poor this season, but he brings... In moments where you're getting pressed in, he's an outlet. He's the one that you can find over the top, and he's the one that's got the legs. And yes, he had a poor game um, yesterday, but he's also the one in the first half that ran most of the pitch to create another attack. And he's the one that can do that out of the Jesus and Sackers and whatnot. So I'd say if, keep if, his space. For if, if anything, game. if anything, Turkish, if you're gonna put any, if you're gonna put, if you're gonna play as Mill Smith Rowe, put him there because that's where he scored 13 goals. <laughs> Put a Mill Smith on the left. Yeah, Listen, Arteta has already said, like, I, I remember this press conference and I was shocked when he said it. He was like, this is not one of the Mill Smith Rowe's better positions is left wing. And I was like, that's basically Arteta saying, I'm never you're, playing him left you're wing. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Like, how? Like, I, I don't know. I think a Mill Smith Rowe could do a job there. But yeah, like, Trussard is not like for like. But the last time that Martinelli was dropped... And Trussard came in the very next game. Martinelli scored a goal and started playing good again. Maybe he needs a chip on his shoulder. Maybe he needs competition for real. I don't know. But I don't I don't think that he should just keep playing this way. It's been a long time. It's been the whole season. Not four games. I you agree. know, so would it be the end of the world if he sat out? I don't know. I don't think so. But I, I, I think I think it's a good point. Just makes there. Make him angry. I would argue that he's probably better when he's angry. Like, piss him off. Like, you're not playing, bro. Like, you're not, you've not been good enough. Go and make him angry and come back in a game or two pissed off. I, I, I don't think he's that good that he has to be played, personally. But, boy, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's move on to... <clears throat> nothing else to talk about in lineup sense. No, let's move on to predictions before we do that. It's time to see the prediction table. And the man that's not here, James Bayliss, has 
secured himself three points with a 1-1 draw predicted. I went 2-2, so I got one point. Lee went for an Arsenal win. Jordan went for a Liverpool win, so no points there. So for the audio listeners, as it stands, 27 games played, 27 predictions made. Lee is top 21 points, three correct scores. James also on 21, but he's in second with two correct scores. I'm in third, 18 points, and Jordan's fourth, bottom of the table, 17 points. It's not looking good, bro. <laughs> it it's never is, good. Jordan, I'm honest with you. Very it's rarely is. It's not looking good. <laughs> they're, they're pulling away, Jess. They're pulling away. <laughs> I was oh, top man. two months ago. <laughs> was you? Yes. I was top in the start of October. I don't remember that. Yeah, you see? Yeah, because yeah, remember Lee was taking the piss out of me that, oh, he's only, gonna, he's only top for one week or one, what was it, one, <laughs> two days, one round. Yeah, two yeah, two yeah, days. Yeah. I was top. <laughs> that was last season, though. I thought that was last season. No, no, no. no that was Daddy, the off the top by shoes, he went, yeah, bang. <laughs> <laughs> in and out. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, Lee. Oh. As the man top of the table, go with a prediction first. Uh, I'm going to go 3-1. Three, 3-1 one. Three, one, Arsenal. James has gone 3-0. So, Jess, Ooh. I'll take yours now as well since you're in his position. 3-1, just like Lee. 3-1. Ooh, 3-1 mine but because Lee's taken. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going 3-1. I Why want not? a 3-1 as well. <laughs> Why not? I it can't just feels like a 3-1. It does. It does. Oh, man. I was going 3-1. Um, all right. In that case, I'm going 4-1. Oh, okay. I think we'll get the goals in this game that we should have got yesterday. 4-1. So all predictions made. Me and Lee. Well, me, Lee and Jess have all gone for a 3-1 Arsenal win. James 3-0 and Jordan 4-1. So big wins predicted. Lee shaking his head. He's nervous. James. Sure. Is... I'm just going to put it out here. You're a slag, right? That's all I'm going to say. People watching the show, what have I done today yeah, for Lee to turn around and just abuse me 52 minutes in? What have I actually done today? I haven't mentioned. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping quiet. I haven't mentioned anything at all. I don't know what his problem is. And he called me Scrooge at the beginning of this show. I'm smiling. Look at him. Oh, you do make me laugh. I, I do love you, but you are a dirty, dirty dog. No <laughs> that, right? I love you too, Lee, man. I love you too. So it's always love. It's always love. But on that note, and as Jordan turns off his camera to find Sorry. the comments of the day. No, no, no. So I was get, no, 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 no. His girlfriend might just walk past. Who knows? Sad, uh, no, no, no. I was getting my croissant, actually. So just keep it. Oh, is that what you call it these days? <laughs> <laughs> hey, your, your head fault. It's, it's not time for a croissant right now, Jordan. Sorry, what, sorry. Are you, what are you actually doing? Pull that I've croissant. Been up, you want to put some since, butter as well in the kettle? I've been, I've, been, I've been up since three, mate. I'm starving. Anyway, sorry. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It ain't easy. I'm going to get a bit too till four o'clock. Oh, yeah, sorry, bro, sorry, bro. Well, you sorry. saw in the group I'm posting up the links at five in the morning and stuff. This is what I'm saying. So, oh yeah, why don't, why don't give yourself a point? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Why not? Let, let, uh, funnily enough, I've got the table up here. Let me quickly just add that. <laughs> he will as well. Don't push it. <laughs> um, oh, let me go, right. let me go with my comment first because it's more of a request and it's from. Calagiros, and it says, I really want to see a photo of Lee Judges as a young man. I'll I've say no that. idea what he might have looked like. I'm interested as well. Lee, any photos lying about that? I'll, I'll send one. I'll send one when I was younger, like, yeah, like, okay. I'll send one. I'll send one. He can, uh, because uh, I did see that, like, you know. You know what we one... should do? We should have an, we should have an image here yeah, where a young picture of me is here, a young picture of Jordan's there, a young picture of you's under Jordan, and then one of James as well. We can put James' picture now because he's still a baby. So yeah, <laughs> yeah <it's true. laughs> uh, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it into the group, and you can put it uh, put it up next time. Like, I did see that comment. All right, cool. Who's up next? Who's up next? Um, oh, I'll go on, oh, go on, go on. I, 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 go I, I, I was gonna. There, there's one really one funny one about Jordan, like, but I don't. Oh, I, I'll leave that one because you might have got it yourself, like, you know what I mean? So I've gone for this one. It's uh, Ard V. Um, Lee's face when Jordan says he hopes Ramsdale puts in a transfer request because Ray's performance on Saturday is how Michelle looked when when Lee handed her the iPad and looked. <laughs> 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 It's about right, you know what I mean? I just want to say one thing about... Uh, I, I was um, 
quite close to uh, the Ramsdale mum and dad. They was actually watching that game yesterday and knowing that their son weren't playing. A big up to them, like, you know what I mean? And they were still cheering on the team and everything like that, you know. So, um, big up to them. I, I, I thought they <coughs> might have said, oh, no, we ain't bothering going as it's right by Christmas, but they was there. And when Arsenal scored, they were cheering and everything like that. So, big up to the Ramsdales. Fair play. Nice. Nice. Um, I, I've got one here from <laughs> user BJ6GK. I oh, don't know, some long mad name. Um, short one. Jordan giving a nice speech and then not backing the boys to win. <laughs> <laughs> and then absolutely tearing them apart on the first shot back after getting a point. You can add that to it as well. Standards. Standards, Turkish. Standards. Standards, you know I mean? Standards out here. Kind of in the title. You've, you've come to love it, people. Hit the like button. Jess, have you got one today or was it late notice for you to come on? Because I know it was late. I didn't do my homework. Uh, can we'll I take, do we'll just, can I do just with one then? Can we'll I do just with one? Yeah, you can do mine. Like, you know, having seen Jordan's partner, I now know why he only catches the highlights. Of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Give Jordan a point. That's what I say. Like, like, like. He's a busy man. He's a busy man. man. He's eating all, croissants. Oh, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? all, always eating or drinking as well. Like, sorry. You know? First of all, I watched all the Arsenal games in their entirety. One game! One game I missed! And now look at this. And second of all, <laughs> she will love that. So thank you very much for us some names. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Uh, coming to the day, done. Predictions made. Topics discussed. Jess, big up as always. It won't be oh, the last time you're on. Jess. Big up, Jess, man. Thank you very much. I had coming fun. In. Thanks, guys. Love. I know. I know very it's good early. Night, everyone. I know it's early in the morning where you are now. So I really appreciate you. Um, stay in that extra hour and a bit because, yeah, Jordan was messing about last night. So we should dock points off Jordan, but I'm not even, it's a Christmas spirit. I'm not a Scrooge. I'm not a Grinch. I'm just, you know, I'm just here. Just, Jess, just I'm know. hugely appreciative. Thank you very much um, for being messed around. Um, sorry. It was totally, this one was totally my fault. What about me and Lee? Sometimes it's not actually my fault. This one is totally my fault. Um, yeah. Jess, love. I what about me and Lee about, about, sorry, Jess? I'm so sorry, Jess. What about me and Lee, my brother? What time's, so the, sorry, what, 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 what time's the next show, Turkish? What time's the, what time's the next recording? <laughs> when we're doing the air? Happy <laughs> 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 Jess, love for coming on. Go follow, sub um, subscribe to She Knows Arsenal. The link in the description. Lee, Jordan, love as always. People, I hope you've enjoyed it. Merry Christmas, to everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. And a reminder, today, 6 p.m., AFTV Bake Off comes out. Lee Judges is in that. And then Boxing Day, midday, is the special unfair play quiz Forever Arsenal. Uh, me and James versus Jordan and Lee Judges. So make sure you're there for that. Because it all has an impact on the prediction table moving forward. So we want you guys and girls to be updated come the next show. And yeah, we will be there. Love for the love, people. We're out. Peace. <laughs>